In order to get the design, the first thing you need to do is open your browser and you want to go to the Sweet Pea website, which is swpea.com. And once you get here, in the search box, type Christmas Frost. And it will come up right here and you can click it. Okay. And it's $15. You only need one. You would add to cart. And no thanks on these other things right here. And now you can see it is in your cart. But I highly recommend that you sign up for an account with them. Just click right here and then you can log into your account. You can come right down here and it'll say new customer, create your account and fill out all of your information like that. Okay. Now let me show you how to download it. Once you've purchased it, there's a couple of different ways you can get to your order. And you can go to my account and download files. Your designs that you have purchased will come up. And here it is right here. And I can go and click this. And you're going to get two options that say German instructions. I don't want that one. If you want that one, feel free. Or you can do English instructions. I accidentally downloaded this one time and then I thought, well, what am I doing? So you can download this one. Now notice this is a zip file. That means the files are compressed and they cannot be used until you unzip the file. That's really easy to do and I'm going to show you how. Just go ahead and click on it. And it will begin downloading in your downloads. Now I'm running Windows 11. If you're running an earlier version of Windows, you may see it over here or you may see it down here somewhere, but it's going to go into your downloads folder. You might need to file save as it might have a little folder wanting to know where to put it. I recommend putting it in your downloads. Now we need to create a place for this to go so we can unzip the files and put those files in that folder. I'm going to come down here to the bottom of the screen and I have a little yellow folder. I'm going to click that. That's my file manager. And I'm just going to open the window that comes up. Across the top, you will have a little bar up here. And this is like a breadcrumb trail. Think of Hansel and Gretel. This will tell you the file path of everywhere that you are as you go further and further down into your file structure. Now I file all of my embroidery designs. Most of them are by subject. A few of them are by digitizer company, like I do have a folder for Kimberbell, but I usually like all of my designs filed by subject. So inside of my documents folder, let me back up real quick. I have the quick access open right here on the side. If yours does not look like that, I really recommend that you enable this feature on your computer. So we'll come up to the view menu and click. There's a little down arrow. You might have a menu across the top right here. If you have an earlier version of Windows and you want to click on view. So I'm going to click view right here. And I'm going to come all the way down to the bottom where it says show. And I want to make sure that navigation pane is checked. So watch what happens if I uncheck this. That goes away. Now that is okay, but having that quick access bar makes my life so much easier. And I can keep everything really organized and I'll show you why. So I'm going to click on view again and go to show. And I'm going to click navigation pane. Okay. So now this is in my navigation pane. We've got quick access. We have the desktop, downloads. If I wanted to get the file, there it is. My documents folder. I have some other things in here that I use frequently. So I'm going to go to my embroidery folder inside of my documents. And if you notice right here in documents, I have an embroidery folder right there. That's because I put that there. These are shortcuts to get to folders that you use frequently. 
So I'm going to go down to my embroidery folder and I'm going to double click it. And inside of my embroidery folder, I'm going to go to Christmas. I'm going to, this is a Christmas design. I like to keep all my Christmas goodies together. I'm going to double click Christmas. All right. Now here is a folder for Christmas Cross and Flowers dash SWPEA for Sweet Pea. I created this folder so that I have a place for all of my zip files to go. Let me show you how I did that. And in Windows 11, you can come up to this button right here. Now there's many ways to do this. This is just an easy way but where you can see the buttons you need to push. Click New and click Folder and a folder will pop up that asking you to change the name of it. So I'm going to type in Christmas Cross and Flowers dash SWPEA. I'm going to hit enter. Oh, it says you've already got one. Do you want to merge it with this one or the new folder? So see it it knows that there's a problem there and that's going to cause a conflict. So I don't want to do that. So let me put some, let me click no. And it went back to now I've got new folder and I can't edit it. If this happens to you, make sure it's highlighted by clicking on it one time. You can edit it that way or you can let me click off or you can highlight it and right click. And there's a shortcut right here. It's a little box with a dash, and that is rename. Or you can scroll all the way down here to more options, and rename is right here if you click on that. Okay. So there's, if you get stuck right here, it's not a big deal. So I actually don't want that new folder. I already have the folder made in my Christmas. I'm going to highlight it and let me click it. And I am going to right click and I'm going to go to my trash can and delete this. But that's how you do that. So let me get back up to Christmas cross and flowers sweet pea. Now, Remember, we talked about the quick access over here. I'm just going to grab this and I'm going to drag it over here underneath embroidery. See the black line? And when I let go of it, there it is. Now there's a shortcut. So I'm going to be referring to this quite a bit. And this is easiest now for me to go, a, go over to the quick access and click it and jump in and get my files. All right, so we are now in our little breadcrumb trail. We're in Documents, Embroidery, Christmas, and Christmas Cross and Flowers. So now we have a home for the files that we downloaded. So I'm going to go back to my Downloads folder right here. I'm going to click it, and there it is right there. What you want to do is click it one time with your mouse, right click and you'll get a menu and you want to say extract all now it wants to know where do you want to put these files once we extract them so it says select a destination and extract files so i'm going to click browse and what i would do is over here in my quick access i would click christmas cross and flowers now if I didn't do that, if I was to go to embroidery, then I would have to scroll down to Christmas, double click that. Okay, this is the hard way. And then scroll down to Christmas Cross and Flowers and then click Select Folder down here. Okay, I'm not going to extract it again. I've already done that. So I'm going to click Cancel. Let's get back over to the folder. So I'm going to go to Christmas Cross and Flowers dash Sweet Pea. And here is the file where everything was placed when we extracted it from the zip file. Let's take a look at something. I'm going to come up to view and I'm going to go to extra large icons. And that makes it really big so I can see it. This looks like a regular yellow folder. Let's go back over to downloads. And this looks like a folder with a zipper on it. Whenever you see this folder with a zipper on it, that means that 
this is a ginormous file, 17.8 meg. This means that the files that are in here are compressed and they cannot be used in the format that they're in right now. They're in little bitty, teeny tiny pieces all jammed into where they'll fit like when you stuff a suitcase in a hurry. Okay, what we need to do is extract those files and then they will be placed in an order, the order that they need to be in, like when you unpack a suitcase and place everything in a drawer where it needs to go. So I'm going to go back to Christmas Cross and Flowers and I'm going to go to my folder and double click it. And there we go. Here are my 5 by 7 files, my 6 by 10, my 7 by 12. You have a Word document with instructions and you have a PDF file with instructions. Let's look at the Word document by double clicking it. I'm going to open Word. I just wanted you to see this so you can see it looks exactly like the PDF file that I'm going to use. If you don't have Word, then you would want to use the PDF file. I just happen to have Microsoft Office 365. Okay, so I'm going to open up Christmas Cross and Wall Hanger PDF file. And see, it looks exactly the same. All right. Now, when you get to page two, it has all of the fabric requirements that you need, and they are grouped by the size of the hooping that you're going to make. If your machine, the largest design is in a five by seven, then you would want to use this group of fabric measurements right there. Okay. Let's scroll down. If you are going to make the six by 10, then you're going to make this group of fabric measurements. And again, if you're going to make the 7 by 12, I'm going to make this group of fabric measurements. I recommend that you print out the pages of the fabric requirements and cross off anything that does not apply to you. And that way you don't accidentally cut a piece of fabric the wrong size because you were looking at the wrong thing. It's really easy to do that. So you might want to print these pages out or only print out the page that you need and then run a big yellow highlighter around that or something so that you don't cut the wrong size fabric or batting. To print just this one page, I'm going to come over here to the print icon and I'm going to click on it. Click print. And when the print dialog box comes up, you can see that there are 33 pages of directions here. I'm not a fan of printing all of this out. If you need to, then please do. I will actually migrate this file and I will put it on my tablet and keep my tablet over by my embroidery machine. And that's what I'm going to use all the time to give me the directions. But I do want to print out the page that has my cutting measurements on it. So let me go back. And that is page two. I need page three. Now, you can either go to page three using these arrows to go back and forth, or if you are already on the page that you want to print, you can come over here where it says pages to print and click current. And then that will pop up right there. And I'm just going to hit print. And that way, it's only going to give me page one of one. And that's what I'm getting. So I don't have to print off all 33 pages. This is completely up to you how you want to do that. And once we get past all of the fabric requirements, we're going to get into the instructions. Regardless of whatever size you decide to make, all of the instructions will be the same for each and every size. We are ready to get started with all of our pieces to be cut out and choose threads and fabrics and all of that. Mm -hmm.